we have been doing a series on uh, competition and uh, the theme of the last couple episodes have been like different, different types of culinary competition. Uh, we did Angela Sosa from uh, Top Chef. We did Ed Leonard from the Culinary Olympics and figured we'd reach out to you with the uh, Boku store perspective and just kind of how that's the impression that that's kind of had on your your life and your career and obviously want to catch up with you and and see how the restaurant looks amazing and uh, to see how things are going. So uh, we can kind of kick it off if you, for those of uh, our listeners out there that don't know um, your background and story, if you can kind of maybe give us a a summary of uh, who you are and what you do, we'll, we'll start there. Yeah. I'm Philip Tessier. Uh, Glad to be with you guys here today. Um, Yeah. My journey is kind of, uh, been one from uh, you know the early days growing up in Williamsburg, Virginia, traveling to uh, CIA in New York. Spent about three years there, and then uh, found my way to France for about six months before landing back in New York City. Um, kind of ended up working for Eric Repair for three years at Laverne and then, and then uh, when Per Se opened in in two thousand four, uh, that was kind of the start of my journey with uh, ten years of working for for Thomas Keller. Wow. Uh, between per se bouchon and french laundry so uh yeah jumped jumped from there uh, kind of a a long winding path to uh finding myself somehow uh competing for boku's door uh back in 2015 um kind of happened really i wasn't pursuing you know the competition side of the world but had been watching chef keller's efforts and you know some of the teams you know in, including yours uh in 2013 um, and then, uh, as, as you know, what happens, you kind of catch the bug, you know, and you're like, uh, I think I gotta, I gotta do this thing. So, um, yeah, it was kind of really just, I think for me, I think one of the biggest factors was just the, the patriotism behind it, you know, the, the opportunity to, and responsibility, you know, of representing, you know, our country in the U S you know, on a, on a global scale. So for me, that's always kind of been, you know, the catalyst list, um, you know, beyond the personal realm and the opportunity to, to learn and grow is just the kind of task at hand, you know, that I feel we have as chefs to, to represent ourselves and, and our cuisine and and the country we come from. Wow. I mean, to, to get started in your career, uh, working with like two icons, two pillars of the fine dining world, uh, chef Eric repair and, and, uh, chef Thomas is like, wow, what a, I mean, how do you, it's almost like, where do you go after that? You know, <laughs> what, what experience right. could you go? I mean, it's like no other kitchen's ever going to be the same. So I didn't realize that that was, uh, I mean, I knew obviously you worked with, with Thomas, but I didn't realize that you spent that long, um, three years with chef Eric. That's uh, pretty impressive. Um, well, fast forward to today, how, how did the, uh, the whole, concept with uh the with press restaurant how did the, that uh get started and 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 where about the restaurant yeah uh kind of an interesting journey there i mean uh i set out to open my own restaurant you know basically in 2017 right after you know we took we took gold and after finishing the book that, that was kind of the goal was to you know take a pause on boku store pursue my own goal i'd kind of been doing some you know, other projects. And then, uh, you know, I, I set out to open my own restaurant. We had a opportunity in Yountville, uh, right down the street from Chef Keller, which in hindsight, maybe wasn't the best idea, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I took a job at, at press here in St. Helena as a consultant. I was supposed to be doing 30 hours a week, bring in my chef de cuisine, Daryl, who was going to be, you know, kind of running in the kitchen. So I just be con- consulting on the menu and things, and then working on the new project. Um, that was supposed to last about four or five months. And then uh, one thing led to another and uh, the opportunity we had in Yachtville sort of fell through chef Keller purchased that property. Um, and then kind of the conversation just started of, you know, what, what do we do at press? And, you know, the reality was like press at that point had been, it had been started by Leslie Rudd, who, you know, many might know him from, you know, his uh, standard beverage distribution company in the Midwest, or, you know, he started Dina DeLuca uh, among other chains. And so, you know, he's kind of a, you know, an entrepreneur icon out here. And, uh, unfortunately he had passed away a couple of years before I, I joined press, which is the restaurant he started, um, kind of, a, 
a gathering place among the vintners, et cetera, in, in, in Napa Valley. And so when I came in, it had been, you know, through a, a series of, of chefs before me, it was, it was kind of, uh, in honestly in disrepair and, um, the, the concept was just kind of a steakhouse at the time. Um, and so, you know, at first it was like, all right, let's make this a better version of itself. And then over time, you know, once I realized like, okay, there's an opportunity to work here with Samantha Rudd and her husband, Mason, who now, you know, took over from her father, uh, you know, the concept, the idea is a lot different. Um, and so, you know, over the past few years, they've kind of just given me free run and, um, you know, we've, we've survived the COVID world and a thousand different iterations of ourselves, you know, through that, but it really gave us an opportunity to connect with the community. So I think all together we did, you know, about 25,000 meals for boys and girls club and firefighters and other things happening in the Valley here. So uh, I think it's really been impactful just, you know, kind of recognizing, you know, the role and opportunity we have, you know, as a, as a business, as chefs, you know, in, in the community. Um, so that, that's been great. It's been a crazy winding road from consultant and uh, crisis management to, you know, really just in the last year, I would say kind of shifting to a direction where we're much more of looking to be, you know, one of the premier Napa Valley restaurants, destination location, um, kind of a, uh, you know, much more, you know, modern American um, really, really we're kind of just trying to avoid any labels, <laughs> you know, and just kind of have, you know, free, free reign to do, to do what we want in terms of the cuisine. So, you know, there's always a nod towards the history here and some of the sort of steakhouse side of it, you know, with our relationship with Brian Flannery, who many know as a, as a premier dry ager out here. And this was actually a, the first restaurant he ever worked with. Um, so, you know, we have a relationship that's really strong with him and, um, you know, the big part of, who we've been for many years has just been the, the wine program that we have, um, which uh, we just received the, the grand award from Wine Spectator um, last month, which is wow, you know, really, yeah, thanks. Really, really exciting for us. And, you know, I think one of our main goals is just to put, you know, Napa Valley, you know, on the map and really showcase what Napa Valley is and, and what it stands for. And, you know, we're, uh, it's, it's really amazing here, just, you know, the wines that we pour in the room and, a lot of times those same winemakers are sitting in the chairs. So, you know, we have a really, you know, organic sort of vibrant, um, you know, vibe here that, that, you know, sometimes, you know, a guest will come in, they'll, they'll be celebrating their, their, their wedding and, you know, Opus one winemakers there will open a bottle of wine and pour for them, you know? So it's, it's just kind of a fun, unique setting that you just really couldn't get anywhere else. And, um, yeah, I think it really, I think our main goal right now is just to really establish a, a sense of place. You know, you're here dining with us. That's the most, you know, iconic, memorable moment of, of enjoying Napa Valley cuisine and wine. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're on the journey to get there. So, <clears throat> Phil, and I, I feel like, you know, from knowing you over the years, um, particularly through Boku Store, it's been cool to <clears throat> watch from a distance uh, and especially even kind of through the pandemic, how I feel like you really kind of brought the, the, the DNA of the restaurant to life. Like you kind of really now when you go to the Instagram page uh, or you go to the website, like it feels like there's now more of a story, more of a, of a theme. So uh, congratulations. You know, a lot of people, um, they see the after effect, but they don't realize the what goes into that, you know, the, the thought process and. And then also um, dealing with, uh, you know, a brand that was already established, you had customers and, you know, it's kind of a, you know, I, I kind of think back of uh, the years at the Greenbrier and trying to change the menus. And, <laughs> you know, there's mm-hmm. some people that some people want to see change, other people not so much. So it's a, uh, it's a delicate balance, but you've really have done a amazing job. And I know you have an amazing team there as well that have c- contributed to all that. Um, the, your past training, you, you had the unique perspective of competing uh, in the Boku store as the, as a competitor, as, as the team chef. Uh, but you also uh, were a coach and um, uh, with uh, Matthew Peters and, and ultimately coming back and, and getting uh, the top tier of the podium, which was an amazing time. You've had these amazing uh, fine dining, uh, experiences with working with such iconic chefs. 
How do you feel like that's kind of that experience has kind of shaped uh, your your style? Because I feel like competing uh, there and doing competition, there's a lot of parallels to like the discipline, the sense of order, the exactitude. Um, you know, people look at some of the, and I know from working with you, just seeing some of the dishes. A lot of people, they see, they can't even imagine how you would even put something like that together. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I look at what you're putting out in uh, the restaurant now, and I think it's from a different perspective. It's the same thing. It's like, wow, how do you do that uh, in a, in a restaurant and be able to get it to look that beautiful and taste that great? Um, How do you feel like that high level of training has kind of shaped um, your style today or, or, and are there other things that have kind of contributed to your, to your style? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know. I remember, you know, being, being a young chef and, you know, watching all the, the chefs who've been to school and were well accomplished and you're like, man, I just can't wait to, till I know how to do everything like these guys do, you know? And I think that's the reality is like, I'm still waiting for that moment, you know, <laughs> <laughs> This, despite all, all the experience you had, you know, it's, yeah. it's, you still, you still find yourself, you know, in a state of learning. And I think, you know, what I, what I love is being able to pull from my experience and, and what I know, but challenging myself, not, not to stay there, you know, and to uh, really pull from the rest of the team, the influence of, you know, my sous chef from Mexico city, from another sous chef from El Salvador, you know, and, and be able to kind of, bring a sense of refinement. Um, you know, I think if I would define what we do here in just simple terms, you know, it's sort of the approach of having sort of a, a sense of refined simplicity, you know, the, the, the technique behind everything is, you know, I don't consider it complicated. I'm sure others do, but, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of giving a sense of showcasing things in a, in a simple but refined and refined way um you know we're a big restaurant so you know we'll do over 200 covers in a night and wow you know it's uh it's a kitchen that's in desperate need of a remodel so that's the next step in our journey hopefully um but you know it's it's kind of outperforming what we've been given which has always been our our mo you know especially with boku it's just i mean you know how it is you're kind of carving out your own path and um you know trying to you know overachieve basically so um, I think in terms of a style and the food that we do today, um, you know, obviously taking influence from from my time working with Eric Repair, Thomas Keller, and then, you know, also just challenging yourself, like, I am i can't become a copy of, of those guys, <laughs> you know? Right. So, you know, I think this is really the first moment, you know, where I'm kind of like really defining like what what is, you know, my style, what is that look like, you know, from our side. And I'm actually really... I'm really happy with where we're at right now and kind of the way things have come together, the sort of, you know, nod that we have towards the history of this restaurant towards where I've come from, but, you know, sort of creating its own identity, you know, at the same time, which I think is, is really important. I think there's, you know, obviously a lot of the restaurants that are <laughs> iterations or, or copies in some form of, of where people have come from. So, you know, especially with my proximity to, you know, the French laundry epicenter of Yonville, you know, it's just, <laughs> We, ha- we, we have to be different. You know, we have to showcase that in a different way. But um, I think the competition landscape, you know, and that that experience, that effort, you know, I think I don't feel like it influences the food as much as the culture and the mindset. You know, right. talk, we talk to the team all the time about, you know, a winning mentality, you know, and just what what is our response when things are difficult, you know, and how do we look for the solutions rather than dwell on the problems? Um, and I think that that makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, it's incredibly hard, especially when there seems to be way more problems and solutions right. <laughs> on, on, any, on any given day, you know. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, we're still, you know, this is kind of the starting point for us um, in terms of what we hope to do. And, you know, as you mentioned, the team here is pretty extraordinary and it's taken, you know, some time to build and put together, but, you know, we're really looking, you know, forward to, you know, new projects, um, you know, reigniting Boku store again, you know, with hopefully some of our team. Um, so that's kind of a big goal, you know, for our, us as well as we move forward. Wow. Chef, um, I have a question. How did Boku store change coming up? Coming from those chefs that you were uh, working before Bocuse, how did that change? How Bocuse or impacted your life um, after after you competed? 
Yeah, I think somebody asked me that recently, and I, I feel like the the impact was slow to be realized a little bit. You know, I think, you know, Boku's door was like, what is this thing? You know, nobody really knows. And then we took silver. Everyone this came out of left field. Nobody expected us to win. You know, um, people probably didn't even know we were doing this. And, you know, I think the ongoing effort and journey with, with Matthew and coaching and doing the book has really kind of solidified, you know, that, that relevance of the Boku store and, and the impact that has here, you know, in the U S and, you know, our goal is to continue to grow that. But, um, you know, aside from that, I think personally, you know, it just, it did two things. I think one, like while I was competing and doing this is like the first time, like, this is, this is me, right? Like this is representation of myself, my food. Like, obviously there's the influence and effort of all the coaches and everyone involved, but you know, you're the only guy standing there cooking that day aside from myself right. and Skylar as the co- as the call me. So um, I, I think that was kind of the point where like, you know, you're, you're no longer dependent on the, the systems and history of, you know, the chef you're working for and, and trying to fit into their box, you know, you're creating your own, it's up to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like after that, you know, that kind of gave me the confidence of like, you know, who I am as a chef in a sense, um, really kind of kicking you out of the nest and doing it on your own and, and, and having to learn to, you know, not only fly, but soar. Right. And, um, I think also the mentality, you know, for me has been just, I think that that affirmation from the community, especially the community of chefs in the culinary world, you know, where there's an immediate respect and recognition, you know, for what that effort is, um, you know, the same you would see and give to, you know, Michelin star chefs and especially on the two, three star level. And so, you know, I think that's where, you know, that's kind of where the shift is coming, you know, from that sense of recognition and, and giving me more of a platform to work from, um, you know, and I think not just in the community, but as we've gone to look to start a restaurant or work with the Red family here at press or, you know, in conversation with investors or others, you know, people see that, okay, you're somebody who finishes something, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you're willing, you're willing to put in the effort, you know, right. you're willing to, to go the distance. And, you know, I think that's something I, I, I get, I get, I wouldn't say jealous, but sometimes I look at what other people are doing. And I'm like, oh man, I, you know, wow, that's really amazing. And and then you just stop and realize, like, I think for me, what the difference is sometimes is we're looking to build sustainability. You know, I want press to be here for 25 years. You know, I don't want to be a flash in the pan excitement, you know, in right. 2022 or 2019 or 2025, you know, we want to be, you know, a consistent opportunity for, you know, chefs and young cooks to come here to learn and grow, to have an impact in our community um, and not just to, you know, kind of showcase what we do and, and really in, in a, in a, you know, kind of more generic way, but to be more sustainable, to be, you know, more influential over, over time. Um, and, and that's really kind of what, you know, my goal is, is to kind of build, you know, I, I think as you guys know, like when you want to get involved in the Boku store, you're like, like, what do I do? Like, where do I go? Like there, there really, there really isn't a clear answer to that. Um, and, and so for me, it's to build that opportunity here where people know if you want to get involved in this competition, you come here, we have structure for that. We support candidates to do so and not just Boku store, <laughs> but San Pellegrino or, you know, Shinda Rotsas or other things like this, where, um, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a huge believer in being a competition chef you know, I'm a believer in being a chef and competition being, you know, something that's really a catalyst to understanding your full potential. Um, You know, I still look back at the year when I competed and just like, you know, I think I was, I was in the best physical, mental, emotional shape ever in my life, (laughs) you know, because it, it just, it just focuses you, you know, it just focuses you on, on one singular task and the ability to reach that level you know, influences everything in your life after that, because you know, you could reach that level, you know, it's but amazing. you also know the, the incredible discipline it takes to get there. And sometimes you're like, ah, so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think it also, there are a lot of tools that it develops that you <clears throat> kind of reach in and, and use again throughout your, your career, you know, whether mm-hmm. it's organizational skills or, 
Um, as you mentioned, like just execution, like getting things done, like that's not an easy thing to do. A lot of, especially in this industry where you got, you know, curveballs getting thrown at you, like right and left, it's, it's hard to stay focused. So I think mm-hmm. that cre- creates like a very like sharp disciplined individual. And I think, uh, you know, you're obviously, I mean, you, you know, I, I could tell working with you in the very beginning, um, that you, you had the foundation of what it took to be a winner in that competition. And I think the Boku's door going through the competition, it hones those skills like razor sharp, and you kind of always have them then after that, they may not, you know, be used as frequently, uh, at least not all at the same time, like they were during that, the year of the, the competition, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, you use them for forever. Hey, everybody, I want to take a second to say thank you to our sponsors. This show is brought to you by the following partners. Meat in Bone. Uh, These guys are just doing an exciting thing in the Miami and Florida area. Uh, Check out their website. Uh, They offer premium quality meats hand delivered to your door if you live in the Miami, Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach area. But also, they ship nationally and you can also visit them at some of their boutique locations in the Florida area. Uh, these guys came up to our recent barbecue class and they brought all sorts of amazing cuts of meat, steaks, brisket. Uh, listen, if you're looking for quality steaks like you would get in a restaurant, check these guys out. They've got some incredible selection and top-notch quality. Uh, check out their website. Uh, also, Ovention Oven. These ovens are are just incredible. We've used these during the pandemic. They really helped us kind of pivot and reposition ourselves uh, so that we were able to expand our menu without having to make expensive investments in the kitchen. Uh, these, These ovens offer an innovative solution to restaurant operations, opening up a whole new realm of possibilities with your menus. The Ovention ovens are ventless, they're fast, and operationally friendly in cooking. Uh, the, what we do is we program our recipes in the oven and our cooks just press a button of the image of what they're going to cook. It's a whole new way of cooking. Uh, check out their entire line of Ovention ovens. And of course, Steel Light. Steel Light International has remained an incredible partner of Rosendell Collective. Uh, they are an internationally world leading manufacturer of award winning inspirational dinnerware for the international hospitality industry. They've been a longtime partner of Rosendell Collective, and they're getting ready to uh, sponsor us with some incredible tableware uh, for our new section on Rosendell Online. And we can't wait to see what they're going to come up with. Also, check out Dryager. Dryager offers a level of unprecedented quality for both restaurant and home dry aging programs. They make the most amazing dry aging meat cabinets in the industry. They are designed with sophisticated technology. They're made in Germany, and you can get incomparable taste of restaurant quality steak in the comfort of your own home. Thanks again to our following sponsors, Meat and Bone, Ovention Oven, Steel Light International, and Dryager. Now back to the show. Phil, how have you been able to like kind of balance the um, the <laughs> fame notoriety of being a, the, a chef um, at you know prestigious restaurant Boku store, but also you know the work life balance, family. I see a lot of pictures of your of your great family on um, social media, and you know I see you spend a lot of time with them. How do you, do you have, um, is it challenging to try to find that balance or you, do you have, do you kind of set like a, a, a structured schedule? Um, how have you been able to kind of deal with that? And has, has COVID like during the pandemic, did any of that um, change your, your approach? Um, you know, a lot of us kind of got thrusted into this situation, all of us where we were like at home a lot more. And we, when you get a taste of that, you're like, Oh, well, do I have to work that many hours all the time? Um, but Mm -hmm. how do you kind of balance all of that? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure what you're referring to on the fame side of things, but, uh, (laughs) you know, I mean, you're Uh, kidding. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, no, I think like the, the work-life balance has always been a, a challenge. Um, you know, we work 
12 to 14 yeah. hours a day, you know, and, and I think that's, I, I think that the key thing for me is like life is like, a is, is the, the work-life balance is less like I have two equal scales and it's more like a, a pendulum, you know, it swings really hard to one side and then I just need to make sure it swings back, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and, and doesn't get stuck in one direction. But, you know, I'm fortunate, you know, my wife, she does pastry, you know, she, we went to school together and, you know, she understands and appreciates, you know, what I, what I do. Um, so having, having her support, I think is, has been, has been critical, you know, for me. And I'm not, I'm not really sure how that works without it, you know? Um, but I think in addition to that, I, I think, you know, someone once said, like, if you say yes to one thing, you say no to something else, you know? And, and I think uh, for me, you know, how, prioritizing my family just means, you know, things, things might go slower, you know, for me in terms of the restaurant world or developing something or pursuing a dream or a task. And, and so, you know, just, just being okay with that, being happy with the the balance I have. And, you know, I think the world of social media can be very misleading and you see everybody's like, Oh, they're doing this and that, but you don't, you don't know what people are at on a personal level. Right. And, and so I feel like, you know, for me, family's kind of been that, that equilibrium that I've needed from just kind of going off into the culinary world and, 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 and losing your mind, you know, in terms of like just being fully absorbed by that. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel like, you know, from my experience, you know, having that balance in life, like is really critical um, to, you know, just who, who I am as a person and, and, you know, what I've, what I've found, you know, to be, you know, what I get joy and happiness out of in life. And, you know, I think in, in, in the work world, you know, it's, it's making sure that, you know, when I'm at work, I'm fully committed, you know, and we're fully into it. Um, and then, you know, when I'm home, just, just learning how to turn it off. And, you know, I feel like I learned that mostly when I was doing Boku's door, you know, when I was in that training session, you kind of just, I've recognized, like, I needed to like, just turn it off for like a full day, you know? Right. And there's, there's a certain sort of, you know, rejuvenation slash clarity of mind that happens, you know, when you're not just constantly on, you know, you can't sometimes pull yourself away from it and then come back to it, you know, with the, with a fresh set of eyes. So, um, yeah, I think that's the mistake that we make a lot of times in this business and why you see so much burnout and everything else. If you're like, it's just like, we got to pursue the dream. We got to go, we got to go. And then, you know, it's like a, a young, you know, kid who's really athletic and into sport. And by the, you know, they get into it at 10 years old. And by the time they're 16, they're like, I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. So, it's easy to burn you know, out. Yeah. Yeah. Important point that you made is that balance and being able to get home and just shut it off. You know, whether they're a competition chef or just somebody in the restaurant world, just being able to shut your brain off for a day or even a few hours is, you know, huge for mental health. That's a good point, Rachel. Yeah. Also too, Phil, you said that uh, when people were posting stuff on social media, that it's like not always, you know, accurate. Um, however, Rachel over here is actually in Italy right before that's where she lives. And uh, right before the podcast started, she like showed us the balcony and it, and when she's posting all these amazing pictures on Instagram and everything, uh, that is true. That is that's what it looks like yeah. all the time. Instagram like, isn't always fake. Yeah, I was like, yeah, she's the exception. Uh, it's it was like storming here last night, and I was looking at uh, scrolling through her Instagram feed, and I was like, wow, it doesn't look like it's storming over there. So, but it, yeah, yeah. But, it, but it's true though. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people do um, really kind of project all the things that you know you think people want to see on social media, but you know, be beneath the surface. And really, I think society's kind of gotten that way. Uh, in the Boku's door, um, that competition, you know, a lot of people didn't really see like all the hard days. And I, and I know from my personal experience, and I also know spending time with you, I mean, I remember, you know, our trip to France with, uh, you know, Skylar and you, I mean, it was like, you know, it was, it's, it's an emotional journey and you've got all these adversities that you're trying to deal with. And then the tension and the pressure uh, all boils down to, you know, one five hour period of time and you're in front of all your peers and, you know, the one little thing going wrong, spilling something or dropping something. It's, it's an incredible amount of pressure. And, you know, a lot of people just see the outcome 
but they don't realize. And I think that's, that's where this competition really is so much different than so many other cooking competitions, because that final um, sprint to the finish line is really a culmination of all of these months of work and practice. I remember coming out to, um, out to California and staying at uh, the the house next door to Thomas's, is, which was his uh, father's, I believe, at one mm-hmm. point. And that was like the test kitchen there at the, at the time. And I just remember seeing just the timelines and the list and everything. And it, it just was like, you know, it's intense. People don't see all that goes into that competition. They just see like, hey, you know, the accolades <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, chef, I have a ahead. I have another question. Uh, you were mentioning um, what's uh, what's present, everything that you're working on uh, from there, and how it would be great to get more people uh, in case they want to know more about not just the restaurant but also to get trained for the competition. That it would be a possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, so, two questions: What is Bocuse winners uh, about, and what is their goal, and how can people get to work with you at the restaurant? Well, the answer to the second question is really easy. <laughs> Just send in your application. <laughs> uh, do do, they, have to go, do yeah. they have to go? Do they have to go to any website and they can fill up an application, or how do they have to do it? About. Yeah, I mean, we use culinary agents. Um, you know, Indeed is also another platform, but culinary agents is good. You know, happy to happy to share my email with this podcast as well for anybody who you know just wants to get a hold of me. But um, you know, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, Boku Store Winners. So somehow I ended up being the, the president of, of Boku Store Winners, which is basically the not-for-profit that represents the winners, past winners of, of Boku Store. Um, and, you know, really it's kind of uh, just a small group that, you know, we in the past have just kind of done some events and different things here and there. We're trying to really shape it into, um, you know, something that has a lot more meaning to it and, you know, also kind of, has a sense of giving back. So, you know, part of that looks like, you know, trying to help some of the teams that are developing, um, you know, so we've supported Ukraine. It's really unfortunate that, you know, they were about to compete in their first Boku Store Europe, you know, finals and uh, obviously everything going on in the world prevented that. So, you know, just we've been supporting, you know, actually their team um, and their organization and the families influenced by it. Um, you know, and then as well, last year in 2021, we started the Social Commitment Award, uh, which, you know, was really kind of the impetus for that was, I think all of us challenged in today's world, Boku Store is viewed as this sort of elitist competition that, you know, all these fancy chefs do and really has no bearing irrelevance to, you know, the world around us. But I, I think, you know, that's an unfortunate perspective and, and really couldn't be further from the truth in terms of, you know, what the chefs who are involved do and, and their influence, you know, especially as you see, uh, you know, not just in the restaurant world, but, but elsewhere. Um, so, you know, we're working with Jose Andreas's group now um, we're working on the, the social commitment award, growing that, which is basically that, you know, it's not just, you know, here you are to compete, but you know, what are you doing for your community? What's the, what's the impact your team is having, you know, you have a privilege being on this stage, you know, you have a privilege to represent your country. How are you using that to, right. you know, to, to better, you know, the, the community, the country you're in a specific organization, et cetera. So it was great to see, you know, a positive response to that. Um, and, you know, on top of that, it's, you know, it's such an amazing group of individuals that I've been fortunate enough to become friends with and build relationship with you know, as I, I'm consistently involved in, you know, the, the different finals and national selections at times. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think in terms of, you know, right now we have two people who are, are keen on competing in 25 and 27, um, you know, kind of coming to join the restaurant and, uh, you know, looking at, you know, I mean, it's people see a candidate in a Comey, but there's, there's an army of assistants and other right. people that are really, really critical to our success. Um, you know, Will Mouche was my assistant along with Greg Schesser and Will came back the second year to work with Matthew. And, and that was huge for us just to have that continuity, that experience, that been there, done that, you know, sort of mindset. So, you know, we're, we're looking to build, you know, who are the team assistants, who's the team manager, awesome. who's the candidate, candidate, Comey, you know, so, 
Um, you know, and if, if all of that's born out of a team that, that already exists, it's such a different feeling than, right. you know, pat, patching a group of, you know, they might be talented people, but, you know, if your first moment ever working together is, is in the middle of it, you know, I think the, the challenge becomes a little bit deeper. I was going to say when he said 25, uh, 27, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh my God, it's like 2013 seems like <laughs> so yeah. long ago. I know. Now. Tell me about it. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. Home. It didn't <laughs> seem that long until, <laughs> until you said that. So. Oh, chef. <laughs> just, just because I know, uh, there are some people that are going to ask this question, uh, to put the first filter, do you get people with visas like J ones and, uh, or H one or anything like that for the restaurant? Yeah, we're actually looking to start that program. Um, we've been trying to kind of dig into that a little bit. So, you know, I would love I would love for that to be a possibility. You know, we're actually trying to create an exchange program amongst the Boku store winners. Um, so, you know, people who want to go to, you know, Geranium in Denmark or they nice. want to go to Sergevera in France or, you know, wherever it might be, go to Rene in, in Norway. So, you know, we we all these great people that work for us and at some point you know it's time for them to move on and you know how great would it be for them to have a clear path you know to one of these right. restaurants or, or or vice versa you know someone who wants to come and work in the u.s so um that's a goal and and pursuit of ours so you know definitely happy to explore that and start that program here awesome wow. i think uh that's a great way to to motivate and and try to recruit people um have you found that like after the pandemic um have you found challenges like being able to 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 recruit and find people or do you feel like you've gotten a lot of traction with um kind of having this unique uh i guess kind of training curriculum or that that is an an option which i think is a a great idea i mean um a lot you look at like social media and people are just you hear people complaining like oh nobody wants to work and, da, 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 and on and on and on and all these different things but um i mean it's a real it's a real problem it's it's definitely a real challenge and i th- i always think that you got to have a more you know you got to be more competitive and have a more compelling reason for somebody to want to come and work for you it's no longer like just like a dollar more an hour i mm-hmm. think um mm-hmm. a training program sounds really interesting but Despite that, I mean, are you, you know, is, is, has it been challenging staffing or do you feel like you're making some, some, some headway? Yeah, I think a, a few answers to that question. I mean, you know, first of all, we're fortunate to be right down the street from the Culinary Institute of America. So, you know, we have a, we have a lot oh, of students, that's right? Yeah. you know, here at Greystone, you know, in St. Helena. So, you know, we have a lot of students come work part-time for us. I think, you know, one of the things, you know, working with Skylar as Mike Homie is just sort of the idea that like, you know, as you know, we had challenges here and there and especially towards the end. And I mean, he turned the corner and, and became a superstar, you know, he and, did. Uh, you know, just that, that sense of, you know, we can work with anybody, you know, we can teach anyone, you know, I had a guy come in, struggle as a dishwasher <laughs> working one yeah. day a week, you know, and now, now he's a, an extern who was crushing it, you know, and, and he's all excited about what he's doing, you know, had a, he was an aerospace major before, <laughs> you know, wow. so, you know, it's just, the, I think we've had to sort of reinvent ourselves in terms of being willing to, you know, work with whoever comes through the door, be willing to teach them, be patient with that process. You know, I think press is a great restaurant to get your feet on the ground in this business. And, you know, we just sent one of our cooks to the French laundry, you know, and she came to us super inexperienced, but spent two and a half years really working hard. And, you know, now she's, she's kind of off to the next level, you know? So you know, that's part of our goal here is to see, see that happen through what we do. Um, you know, in terms of finding staff, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a global epidemic, you know, when I'm at Boku store in 2021 or in Budapest, you know, a few months ago, everyone's like, this is incredibly challenging. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, you know, we've had our ups and downs, but overall, I think we're doing really well comparatively to what I hear, you know, and I think, I think the goal is like, you just, you just have to give people a reason to come there instead of somewhere else. You know, you have to be the best, you have to be, you know, I mean, I, I, when I set out to do my restaurant, it was like, okay, I'm, I'm super focused on the guest experience and what that is, but we're going to be equally focused on, on the staff experience. You know, what, what do people say when they, to other people, when they, when they work here, 
you know, why, why should they love to work here? And, you know, Napa Valley is super expensive. You know, I was looking forward to moving here from New York city, you know, back in 20, 2007. And, uh, you know, it was 1% cheaper, you know, I was like, crap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How is it working for Chef Philip this year? What would you say? There's kind of a joke. There's kind of a joke, you know, that people are like, oh, I got PTSD. It's like Phil Tessier <laughs> stress disorder, you know, but uh, <laughs> no, I think, I think, you know, oh, no. for, for me, I, I tell people, I'm like, you know, nothing, nothing we do here is easy. You know, you're here for a reason, you know, you're here to learn. And the reality is people, you know, we did like a, a review, we do a review on a regular basis. And I did a review for one of our cooks and she wrote down, she's like, I want to be pushed harder. She's like, I want to know what I'm doing wrong, you know? And, and, and that's really, that's really the reality of our challenge, right? Is to get the right people through the door. I mean, I've said no to so many people just because they're not a cultural fit for what we want to do, you know? A players want to be surrounded by A players. They don't want somebody that's got to be caught right. to to like get them over the hump. They got to be self motivated. They got to want to do it. So when I'm when I'm firm and direct with them, you know, it's they understand where that's coming from. It's coming from a place of like chefs making me better, and I have a responsibility to the team, you know. And that's really what we need in the restaurant because otherwise, you know, with the pace of which we work and the demand and the level of which we expect, you know, it's it's just not, it's not fun for anyone. You know, I told these guys right. on Saturday night, I'm like, I'm like, we're not having fun right now. I want to be <laughs> having fun doing service. Like we've worked all day to make this beautiful food and, right. and we're, it should be fun and satisfying for us to like execute this and put it out for the guests tonight instead of like, you know, struggling with mise en place that's not right or not being set up on time <clears> and things like this. So, you know, I think the consistency, it's like, there's a lot of similarities to parenting and being a chef, you know, and, you know, consistency, Man. boundaries, you know, setting expectations, <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, I think our goal is to lead from a place where people want to follow rather than, you know, chasing people along. And, um, you know, it's, it's a challenge, you know, I mean, I think people get behind it and they get excited about it. And then, you know, they have a string of bad days or, you know, something happens in their personal life or whatever it is. And, I mean, you have to be a, a therapist. I'm, I'm basically a therapist, a real estate agent, and a <laughs> chef all, all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I think that's just what you what it takes now to to really bring people here to keep them here. Um, and then you know, we just changed the whole structure of of how we are using our tip pool in the restaurant to better to bring better equity to the kitchen team. Um, so that's going to be really huge for us. You know, we're nice. hoping, you know, it's going to take probably a year and a half to really see it worked out because, you know, we need a slow, slow change rather than a fast, harsh one. Um, but that should bring a real positive shift that we hope can be a model, you know, for other restaurants to use because, you know, really elevate what we're able to do. And, you know, we can't ask people to come out here and suffer with us. You know, I earn, I earn 290 a week in New York city for a 50 hour week when I was working in New York. So. I thought it was great. I was like, this is awesome. I'm in New York City. I'm working for Erica Fair at the Brand and I'm like, just punish me. <laughs> you <know? Yeah. laughs> but you know, that that mentality is is less less visible today. So <laughs> yeah. apparently apparently you have to drive a BMW as well as work at a restaurant. So yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um Phil, so what about um like <clears throat> what you do to keep um uh, fit or, or at least, um, you know, to keep healthy, like mentally, physically. And is there anywhere that you kind of, you know, outside of even culinary that you look to kind of draw inspiration? Uh, you know, is there any thought leaders that you like any, any books? Uh, is there anything you do to kind of stay mm -hmm. inspired? Like what, how do you kind of keep the, the engine going? I mean, coming in every day and being able to, execute and drive standards and inspire people um you know how how do you what's that look like for you yeah i think it's actually a massively important piece of the puzzle for me you know like i know especially beginning of this year till now i mean we had a lot of different challenges my chef de cuisine was out for about eight months last year you know with Whoa. with several things so i mean it, we we were taxed with that and then covid you know coming through so you know, you're working 12 days in a row, just trying to keep, keep things moving forward and just being willing to, to do that. But I think, 
you know, I've noticed when, you know, I just get totally like, I got to do this, I got to do this, that, and I, you sort of neglect that, that sort of self-care and like, you know, staying healthy on your own. Like you just, you lose your ability to kind of, you know, people expect you to walk through the door every day and be that inspiration, you know, and be the, be the standard. And, and, you know, if you're not in a great place mentally, physically, it's, it's that much harder to do so. Um, and so, you know, from a personal level, like I, I'm, I'm a huge soccer fan. So, you know, I'm always kind of listening to tracking, you know, what, you know, what's happening in the world and especially in Europe. And I think especially, you know, listening to, um, you know, the critique, et cetera, of the teams and what you recognize is really just what the, how important a great coach is, you know, how do you, how do you man manage a, a group of superstars and get the best out of them and perform? And, you know, we've all seen great teams with great, great players underperform. Uh, and then also seen, you know, kind of mediocre teams outperform everyone else, you know, and, and there's, to me, that's kind of like, what, what does that look like? And that's sort of my exploration more so at the moment. Um, you know, Simon Sinek is a great one um, from a sense of, you know, building a positive team environment, building positivity in, 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 in the workplace and how we view things differently. Um, you know, he has several really great, great talks about the why behind what we do and, you know, the mentality behind with what we, what we should be doing and, and, and how we do that together. Um, so, you know, I think those are all really critical things. You know, uh, I think the important thing that I've discovered for me is like, we, you, like I, I'm just a goal oriented person. Right. So if I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get fit and go run. Like it doesn't really happen if I don't have a goal, like I'm going to run a half marathon in October. <laughs> right. And then it's like, Oh crap. I, I can't fake this. You know, I got <laughs> yeah, like, right. yeah. like, I'm, I'm too, I'm, I'm getting too old to do that. Yeah. Something's going to fall yeah. apart. You know? So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really that. And then, you know, it's, it's like, okay, it's daunting at first, but once you get into it, you know, you get excited about it. And, and then when you do it, you're like, this is great. And then it's more motivation to continue. So, um, you know, I think finding the time to do so is really the challenge. And, and sometimes it means, you know, saying no to something, you know, and recognizing right. like, Hey, my, my plate right now, maybe I can do that eventually, but my plate right now for where I'm at is full and, and being okay with that. I think that's, you know, I, I told people when I was younger, you know, my goal is to work for the best so that, you know, and, and work hard when I was young so I could have choices later on. You know, I think the hard thing is just learning to or being willing to say no to those opportunities. I didn't realize how right. hard that would be <laughs> right. yeah. as, as time came along. You just want to you just want to do everything, you know, which which it seems like, Richard, you're always doing pretty much everything. So I say no to a lot of stuff, but you're you're absolutely right um, it does. that. You, 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 but I say yes to a lot of stuff too. But, he says uh, yes, and then he's like, "Chris, go do this." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean, it's you know, I think, uh, I think there there is an element of um, being excited, and I think uh, you know, I, I, for me, like the creation and ideation. Um, and the creation of something is, is exciting to me. And it kind of, and I think that in and of itself is like one of the things that kind of keeps me going is like the adventure aspect of it, like what's on the horizon. But, uh, I'm always fascinated, you know, we're talking with different people that we have on the show. Uh, when we first started doing this, it was, um, actually just kind of during the pandemic and we just wanted to kind of, we thought it'd be a good way to kind of stay connected with people. But it's actually, it's really been very inspiring and educational. And we've really gotten as much out of it um, as we think other listeners do. And, Mm -hmm. you know, just talking with you and just listening, like what makes you tick? Like how, how, you know, what, what gets you going and keeps you going is different than, you know, some of the past couple of guests that we've had on, but there's parallels. There's similar, there's similar things. I mean, you've got to be inspired. Like you can't fake the enthusiasm when you come in every day, like people Mm -hmm. will see that, you know? Um, so yeah, that's, that's interesting. Uh, Um, uh, chef, is it Cristiano or Messi? Which one? Uh, it's definitely messy for me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, so, so you have to, you have to understand, you know, I'm five, seven, right? Oh, okay. Any, any, anytime there's a, anytime there's a shorter athlete who's correct. <laughs> like we're, we're, we're on the same team. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. People really <laughs> take their soccer pretty serious. I don't know a lot about soccer. I, I was in Italy uh, very early on in my career. And I guess some, they like won a game or something. And I like looked out my hotel room. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like people were like carrying a yeah. boat, like in the town square and like throwing it into the insane. Yeah. yeah. I was like, are we under attack? Yeah. Like what's, what's <laughs> going on? And yeah, I don't know. So it was a soccer I was game. in France for uh, I was in France for the uh, 2000 Euro finals between France and Italy, and oh. I was I was I was at Roger Verge's restaurant right right outside of Cannes, and like it was it was tied like right at the last minute, and then France went on to win it in overtime. And I mean, we went down to we went downtown afterwards, and it was there was like I got I got I was in the middle of a tear gas bomb, like we were <laughs> running into the building. It was crazy. It was pretty wild. It's but for yeah, real. I mean it's. It, it's like nothing there's nothing like that in this country to no that no yeah, it's, last it's, last summer it's good, it's good won and bad <laughs> yeah. we won it's a euro cup bad. last summer and it was insanity you couldn't even get downtown to go out we tried really but it was just like <clears throat> traffic was back all the way people outside yeah, screaming crazy. with their flags it, it's it's euro europeans and soccer is a uh, big thing it's a football. Um, chef. Um, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, chef. Uh, do you suggest any books? Uh, could be from the culinary world, or could be something else. Yeah, I think um, you know when we were doing Boku Store, one of the books that we read was uh, the book uh, Unbroken. You know about the Louis Zamperini story. Um, you know this guy just just crazy life story. And, you know, there's a movie out about it actually came out ironically, like right, uh, right as we were getting ready to go compete. So we, we went out and watched that together as a team, but, um, you know, just that, that story, there's another one called boys in the boat, um, which is about another Olympic story, um, on, on a rowing team. And, um, uh, I love, uh, Eric repairs book. I think it's called 32 yokes just just kind of fun comic relief in the culinary world um but um and and just kind of his journey and and just kind of that that experience um i i think all all of these for me like especially the first two are just more kind of life experience you know and and looking at how do people push back push past you know when they should give up basically you know, when you have that feeling of like, I should just give up right now. <laughs> like, this is too hard. Like, we're not going to make it. There's too many things against us. And just, you know, being able to kind of, you know, move past that, that point um, uh, to me is like really, really a critical thing to understand in, in human nature. Um, and, um, you know, I think there's another book called Culinary Artistry, which maybe a lot of people don't know about, but, you know, it's from um, Andrew Dorenberg and Karen Page. I think it was published like early nineties. And uh, you know, that one's just a, it's a, it's an interesting book just in terms of how they've structured, like, you know, things that go together. This is for more of like a cooking perspective. I'm a super visual person. So, you know, just having a, having a book that like when I, when I read the ingredients and they, they kind of map things out from a season, things that go together, mm -hmm. you know, consistently, it's kind of like I'm looking in the walk-in and it's just something I use, you know, sometimes nice. when I'm sitting sitting at home trying to like think about what we want to do, you know, inspirationally, et cetera. So that, that's just kind of one I've used, you know, throughout my career, I kind of on and off, you know, for, from a more creative perspective. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's more I'm not thinking about right now, but those are a few good ones. And I would add um, chasing Bocuse to that list. Um, <laughs> your book is, well, it is. I mean, it's uh, really a glimpse into more than a glimpse into what it takes to, mm -hmm. to, to compete at that level. And, you know, I, I love the pictures and a lot of the stories Crazy. and I think, and it's just really nicely done. So you, congratulations on that. Um, the, uh, what about, um, the trends, any trends that you're kind of following, um, that are out there in the culinary world? <clears throat> it's like on, that's kind of on your radar globally, regionally. I mean, I think obviously the most obvious one is just sort of this whole, you know, vegan, vegetarian, you know, sustainability. I think it's really interesting and a challenge to all of us. You know, I think it's kind of understanding where your, where your mindset is in it. Um, you know, and I, and I think that's the question is like, you know, how much of this is a trend? 
right? right. And an att- and an attention grab, and how much of this is like re- like what does this really look like? You know, for chefs at moving forward in a sustainable way. Um, I think that's what I'm always looking at when I think, you know, when you use kind of the term trends, especially is, you know, I mean, I remember talking to Chef Keller and I think one of the things about the French laundry that, that is so critical is that they're, it's not a trendy restaurant. <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't jump to, you know, grab the next trend and, and start, you know, throwing it into the mix and they're confident of who they are, what they do. And they consistently do that. And, you know, they have a 3000 person wait list, you know, so <laughs> It, it's working, you know, and yeah. and so I think I think that's the key thing for us is is always kind of getting excited about trends in a sense of like, hey, that's cool, interesting, you know, wow, that's neat to see. But like, what's separating the substance from the trendiness, you know, is really kind of I think the the challenge, and I think something that honestly not a, not enough chefs do, you know, I think a lot of chefs just kind of be like, oh, it's cool, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that, and then you realize like, okay, now you're, now you're part of the Nordic cuisine and that's your new label, but you're still kind of a copy of somebody else. You know, when, what I don't want, when somebody sees my food is like, oh, this is just like so-and-so who's better than me at doing it. Right. <laughs> you know, okay. so, yeah. you know, it's, uh, I think one of the sous chefs from Geranium was uh, competing for Estonia and Boku's door against Rasmus Kofed and, uh, you know, his candidate Ronnie and, I'm like, you're, you're not, you're not going to beat Rasmus doing Rasmus, you know, you, you, you need to have right. your own style. you got to be different. And so I think that's where, you know, being aware of what's going on, seeing what's happening in the world, pulling some things, you know, like from those things, but then also kind of being confident enough in your own identity as well. Chef, one last question about Bocuse. Um, How do you pick the food? How do you decide what's going to be on the plate and the platter and everything else? Yeah, that was an incredibly difficult question to answer when I started. Uh, you know, I remember sitting there. I was there with Martin Katzner, and it's kind of those. He's our designer for from Crucial Detail, who you know I I've become great friends with now. And uh, you know, we're just kind of looking at each other like, "What do you want to do?" And he's like, "I don't know. What do you want to do?" <laughs> you know? And you know, eventually, what I learned is like, you just you just have to start making something. You know, like you're like, "What am I excited about?" Okay, like this needs to be American. Like, what's an ingredient that's American? It's like, well. Europeans hate corn. They think it's, you know, food for, you know, the pigs, you know, so let's do something amazing with corn that changes their mind about that, you know? And so then we spend the next three months exploring corn. You know? And, and I think, you know, I mean, it, the funny thing to me was always like, I would, I, we worked initially, we worked Monday through Friday and, you know, eventually worked, you know, six days and then eventually seven days a week. But in the beginning it was, you know, I would take my weekend and just, be thinking about like, what are we going to do when we get back? You know? And I would be like, depending on the week, you know, it'd be like, Oh, last week was such a struggle. Like, you know, we didn't get much that we thought we were going to get done, come back. Oh, I got all these great ideas. And then you go in to like execute them and, and you're like, they all suck. Like, and then you're sitting there like, what are we going to do? We just lost another week. And then, I mean, honestly, most of the time, some of our best ideas just came out of nowhere. We're like, well, I'll just try this and see what happens. You're like, Oh, this is actually really good, you know? So I think, I think being comfortable with failure, being comfortable with, you know, making something that's, that's really terrible and, and recognizing that, you know, and then also the, on the flip side, recognizing when something's good and being willing to just stick with it. Um, that was, I think that's a challenge for me as a chef and, and with Boku's door is just consistently doing the same thing over and over again you know like we we have certain things on our menu and you know we we kind of change things seasonally but um you know that's the hardest thing for me like when I was doing book store I was so close to it I'd done it so many times that I really relied on you know when other people would come in and taste the food like just watching their first response like not what they said afterwards so much but what was their first response you know did their eyebrows go up were they excited about it could you tell that they immediately enjoyed it And then that was the validation for me that, that we were on the right path. Um, but you know, the key thing for me was just, you, you just got to get started and, and then, and then stick with it and then know when you've gotten something good and, and stick with it. And then, and then from there, it can still be a slow evolution and refinement, but you know, I think some of the challenges we've had with teams in the past has been changing things too much, you know, too, too late in the game and, and, and creating challenges in that regard as well. How, how long, how long does it take two, four, six years to train, to get to Bocuse, to go for the winning? 
Yeah. Well, the most important thing to recognize is that when you start competing for Boko's door, you, you're not training anymore. <laughs> you know, like, like you need to be a great chef at that point in time, right? Like you need to have all the skills in your toolbox in terms of, of cuisine and technique and ideas and discipline, you know, at that point, you know, that's why, you know, for me, <clears throat> when people I've, you know, I've had other chefs who've competed for Boko's door in the past and, you know, maybe took second or third in the U S finals and they're like, Oh, this is my dream. I'm like, is it like, if, if it's really your dream, then you're going to, you're going to do whatever it takes to pursue that, which is you need to go work for the best. You need to go learn how to step one is learn how to be a great chef, right? If you're going down a path of like, I'm going to do so many competitions and then I can get there. Like that's going to be valuable to you, but you, you have to be able to do both, you know? And I came from the total opposite world. I had never competed in anything when I competed in Boku store. In fact, there, we didn't even have the America selection. There was no U S nationals. Cause that's I was right. like the only idiot. I was the only idiot who applied, you know, so, <laughs> um, you know, and, and so like we're competing against guys who've been doing Boku's door for a decade, you know, and Skyler and I are like, this is like literally the first time we've ever competed in anything together. So, you know, I think that just is validation to the point of understanding food, being a great chef. And then, it, and then it's really about pursuing for me, it was, it was pursuing the competition side. You know, Richard was a massive help and, how do you do this? How do you structure this? Like, how do you set up your training runs and, and what's teach me the competition side of this. And, and that's where you just have to be hungry for knowledge and be, be willing, even at that level to be a student, you know, for, for those who've come before you and done other things that you haven't, you know? So, um, yeah, I think it's important to recognize that when you're the book store candidate, you're not like some superhero chef, you're a guy who's here to learn and here to like figure it out. And, you know, it's a, it's a journey and it's a process. I mean, you're spending over a year just going towards one goal and, and you have to have a sense of humor. You know, we, we just made a joke about the fact that, you know, we only get one shot at this, <laughs> you know, five and a half hours, one chance, anything goes wrong, we could be screwed, you know, and that can really get in your head. But, you know, we would just joke about it every day. You're like, Hey, we only get one shot at this guy's five and a half hours. That's it. You know? And, yeah. and, you have to be comfortable with the risk, you know, and comfortable with, with what's going to happen and, and have a sense of humor and enjoy the journey. You know, I think that's the, the important thing. Well, I know we're, uh, we're really well said, and I know we're getting close here uh, to wrapping it up with uh, about an hour in. Um, if if uh, anybody else has any um, last questions, feel free to chime in. I just had, uh, first of all, I wanted you, uh, Phil, to let us know where people can find out more about you uh, the, the website, uh, and then, uh, or social media. And then also, um, I didn't have a last question. I just had one last comment. Um, is I, I, one of the things I really always, I mean, I've, I've thought very highly of you working with you over the years and, you know, I've, uh, as a result of doing Boku store and doing the competitions, you know, these, uh, relationships always blossom and, and those experiences are the things that you remember. But a lot of times you remember a lot of the little things, uh, not even the moment of like going on to the podium. Uh, yes, that's a big thing. That's really cool. But one of the things I really, um, this says a lot about you was right after the competition, uh, I knew you were like caught up in the, you know, I, my, you know, I'm like, he's caught up in the whirlwind, just, you know, big announcement, making history, everybody's partying. We're having a, you know, it was like the, uh, the, the night of, and the next day, everybody's just like over the top. And then I had, fl I flew back like um, the, I think I flew back like a day early or whatever after the competition. I don't know. I think maybe you were going on to your, going up, uh, maybe you're saying, spending a couple of days out there. I can't remember, but I was in New York and the phone rings my, my cell and it was you. And you just kind of said, Hey, Richard, you know, just want to tell you safe travels back. And I want to thank you for um, all of the help with the training over the last several months. And I was like, I was like, wow, that, that really says a lot about, you know, who you are that, you know, I mean, obviously we could, you could have waited till we got back or sent an email back, but you know, I, that's one of the things I remember about you. And I really appreciate that. And, you know, people, um, you know, they don't always, they see all the accolades and stuff like that, but really the person really, you know, you, you live up to. Yeah. I mean, I think um, the appreciation for the team, the recognition for the team effort that's that's always the challenge you know I, I think everybody is willing to put in whatever it takes sometimes but sometimes you need that 
you know, sometimes you don't even know you need it, <laughs> you know, that, that sort right. of affirmation that, you know, you, Hey, you're a part of this, you're the reason that we're, that we're being successful. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, I know, especially when I, when, when we came back from that, you know, it's just like, you know, between you and Martin and, and everybody who had been part of that team, you just, you're like, there's no way we would have done this on our own, like zero chance, you know? And so, yeah, I think, I think that's a key part. I'm, I'm not, I'm not actually great at it, to be honest. <laughs> I, I came up in, a, I came up in a world where like, where you're, if you're not getting yelled at, that's, that's kudos. You know? <laughs> so, you know, it's actually something we, we, we now talk about on a weekly basis, you know, right. how can we, you know, even if it's just like, Hey, here's a gas card, you know, thanks for doing this or that, you know, or, Hey, I, awesome. I know you've been pulling extra, extra weight, you know? So we're, we're, I'm, I'm working to be better at that consistently. So I'm glad, uh, yeah, thanks for that. And where can people uh, find out more about you from, um, the website or social media? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, social media is obviously, I'm, I mean, Instagram is the main thing I'm on, you know, I don't, I don't do too much Twitter, Facebook, all that jazz. So, uh, just, yeah, it's become too much work, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> You know, I think the the website for me is probably less so, uh, at least on our website, you know, press website is probably a better way um, as well, but really social media is probably the best one. Chris, Rachel, anything else? Rachel. This has been an extremely expi- uh, inspiring conversation. And uh, if you ever are in Italy, please reach out. I would love to host you and cook here and show you the view I can see from here. Awesome. I was gonna ask. I, I was gonna ask you where you are. If you ever but... need an ex- if you ever need an excuse, I'm in Southern Italy in Calabria. Okay. So okay. Well, well, you're welcome anytime. Hopefully, I'll be talking to you soon because I'm gonna be going to Italy. <laughs> yeah, Philip. Great, nice. uh, great connecting with you. Best wishes to your family, <laughs> to your team, and uh, continued uh, wishing you continued success with everything. And look forward to seeing you here in person, hopefully uh, soon. Thanks for for giving us. Your time. It was a great conversation. Thank you very much, Chef. All right. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Appreciate it. All right, man. Thank you, Chef. Bye-bye. All right, Chef.